In this video, we'll look at graphing a transform sine wave. So, the equation we have is y equals 2 sine of 3 x minus 45 plus 1. Notice that this 3 is factored out here. That's good. You want to make sure that you've factored out the k value from both of the terms in the brackets here. It's been done. So we'll make an original sign table. We'll do one full cycle, starting at 0, and then 90, 180, 270, 360. That's the full cycle of a sine wave. You can ask your calculator if you don't know. What's the sine of 0? You get 0. Sine starts at 0. What's the sine of 90? It's 1. And you might know it off by heart. It's good if you do. It just saves a bit of time. It goes back to zero, 90 degrees later it's down to negative one, and then it's back to zero. So that's your original equation of just the basic, if we were to write it out, this is just y equals sine x. Okay, now we're going to use our actual equation to make a mapping rule. A mapping rule is like a recipe. It takes some points, an x and a y, like all the points we've had written here, and tells us how to change them. So first, let's look at what's happening to the x's. The x stuff is the stuff in the brackets here. And with the x stuff, you always do what's opposite of happening in the brackets. That's just the rule we're going to go by. And that's the rule that always works. In the brackets here, it says times by 3. We're going to do one-third of all the x's. You could think about this as that's what happens before the input. It's, that is, it's the opposite operation because it's happening to the input beforehand. However you learn it, it's important to know since it's times by 3, the mapping rule says, hey, you're going to take all the x's and divide them by 3, or times them by a third. And instead of minus 45, you're going to take all your x's and add 45. That's the x part of the mapping rule for this equation. The y part is just reading it straight through. This says, two times all the values you get out of here, so we're going to do two times the y's. And at the end there's a plus one, so we're going to add one. So you've got your x transformations by doing the opposite of what's in the brackets here, and your y transformations by doing what's outside those brackets straight as they appear. Notice we do the multiplying first on each of the x and y stuff, and then the adding or subtracting. Okay, let's make our new table. Our new table has an x and a y column like before, but we take all these points and transform them with the mapping rule. Let's do all the x's first. Let's take 0 and do a third of 0. What's one third of 0? That's just 0. Plus 45, you get 45. Let's take 90. What's one third of 90? 90 divided by 3, that's just 30. 30 plus 45, you get 75. 180, 180 divided by 3, that's 60. 60 plus 45, 105. 270, 270 divided by 3, you get 90. What's 90 by 40, plus 45? Hmm. If you're not sure, you can use your calculator. But you should also see the pattern. It's 135. I did that in my head, but then I checked. Look, plus 30, plus 30, plus 30. I bet the next one's 165. 360 divided by 3 is 120. Yep, 165. Those are the x's. The y's are usually a lot easier, and they are in this case. Just take the y's, go two times whatever the y is, add one. So I'll walk you through. Two times zero, zero, plus one. Two times one, that's two, plus one. Two times zero, plus one again. It's the same thing as last time. It's the same number, zero. Two times negative one, that's negative two, plus one gives negative one. And finally, 0 again, 0 times 2 plus 1. We've got our new table. And so now we're ready to graph. Let's make our graph with this ruler. Make a nice x-axis. And put our, oh, made a little typo there. Y-axis. Be sure to label them. Better label my x-axis. Put some nice even ticks using the centimeter and half centimeter marks. And you just gotta label your graph. It's gotta be done. 
what we're going to do is graph that equation. And how do we graph it? We've made our new table using the mapping rule. Now we just got to put our points and create a nice wave. So let's do that. Oh, we should put our scale first. Let's see. We need to go at least to 165. So probably a scale of 15 will work well. I hope that'll fit. Let's see. 15, 30, 45. Mm, looks like we might not have enough. Let's keep going. 15, 30, 45. So d d 90. D d this will be 135. Oh, it just might make it. All right, let's label them. This is... I'm going to label every second tick. This is 30. So this is 60. This is 90. 120. 150. Perfect. Wow. I got it exactly right. This last tick will be 165. That's great. The scale on the y-axis will be different. I only have to go up to 3 and down to negative 1. So I'm going to go by 1s. I'll label every second tick. Here's 2, 4, negative 2, negative 4, negative 2, negative 4. Okay. Let's put our points. 45. That's here. And 1. Put a dot. 75. That's here. And 3. Put a dot. 105, that's here, and 1, put a dot. 135, and negative 1, that's here. And last, 165, that's our last tick, and 1. We gotta connect them, but remember, it's a wave, it's a sine wave, so it shouldn't just be straight lines. We gotta make little curves. So I'm gonna put this little U shape here, remind myself to curve at this point, and you gotta sort of stay flat for a bit and then come down through your point. Let's put an arrow too to show this keeps going. In fact, it's going to even curve around a bit. I can probably show that a bit better. We know it's going to curve back. Okay, this stay flat for a bit, and then come to this point. Go diving down, but then flatten out for this point. And finally come around, come back up, put an arrow, because it goes on forever. And we've done it. We've graphed a transform sine wave. We took our equation, knew that the parent function was sine x, so we made an original sine table. Then looking at our equation, we made a mapping rule and used that mapping rule recipe to create a new table. That new table is what we graphed.